Hey guys, this is Janine from Pangolin Photo Safaris and today I'm here with you on the beautiful Chovy River to talk to you about micro four-thirds sensors. In this little tutorial I will firstly talk to you about what a micro four-thirds sensor is, then discuss why one might want to switch for wildlife photography, thirdly the three most important advantages and disadvantages for micro four thirds sensors and lastly which camera bodies in particularly are most suited. Let's dive right in. Thereby I'm really excited to have my good friend and industry colleague Mark Buckler here next to me on the Chobi. Mark has been shooting Olympus for the past three years as a biologist and professional wildlife photographer. Welcome Mark. Thanks, Janine. It's awesome to be back here on the Chobe River. So what is a micro four-thirds system? A micro four-thirds system simply refers to the size of the sensor that is within the camera. It is, for one, a different aspect ratio, namely four-thirds instead of two by three. But most importantly, it is much smaller than our average full-frame sensor and even the various crop sensors that we have on the market. If you take the diagonal of the sensor, it will effectively be half as long as your full frame. So when your sensor only covers basically a quarter of the entire surface area or half of the diagonal, it will look at a smaller area of the entire picture. What that means at the end is that you have a phenomenal amount of lens magnification. So we have a two times crop at our hands and we can get double as far with our focal length. That is fantastic, but it also affects the way the light is being processed on that sensor. Whether these aspects are good or bad for wildlife photography, I'm going to discuss with Mark today. Okay, Mark, so you've been shooting Canon for the previous 17 years of your life. That shows a lot of brand loyalty, I want to say. So what made you change your mind and change your entire system to Micro Four Thirds? Yeah, I shot Canon for 17 years and then three years ago I did switch to the Micro Four Thirds system uh, of Olympus, which is now known as OM System. The biggest change for me was due to the fact that mirrorless was definitely going to be the future. And in 2015, when it came to mirrorless cameras, uh, Olympus was ahead of the curve with their autofocus ability, whereas Canon, in my opinion, was lagging behind with autofocus on their mirrorless cameras. Olympus offered me uh, the chance to try out their equipment for three months, and the short story is within one month I sent the equipment back and replaced all of my Canon gear with the equivalent in uh, Olympus gear. That's, that's the story. That is quite a brave step to do, <laughs> yeah. if I have to say so, because, yeah, you know what you had on your hands. Yeah, and... it was very scary to do that, but I was so impressed with some of the features and other things that we'll talk about with the Micro Four Thirds Olympus system. I took the leap and uh, have been very happy with it. Fantastic. Okay, so that was Mark's personal choice. However, as a 10-year shooter of Canon myself, I'm going to play devil's advocate in this one and want to dive a little bit deeper into all the advantages and disadvantages that these Micro Four Thirds sensors bring along with them. Let's start out with the positives here and let's start out with the most obvious advantage there is. The smaller size sensor doesn't just allow for a smaller camera body, but as mentioned before, gives you a two times crop and therefore a lot more focal range. So, in the field, how important does that become for a wildlife photographer? So the biggest advantage with a Micro Four Thirds system like Olympus is its portability. Like Janine was just saying, the smaller size sensor allows for a smaller camera body, but it also allows for much smaller lenses to be placed on the camera body. That increases the portability to the point where in the last three years since I switched to Olympus, I have not had to put my, my biggest lens, my 800 millimeter to almost a thousand millimeter lens on a tripod to shoot. I can hand hold everything. The image stabilization is fantastic. And 
being able to just change angles slightly without having to move a tripod and just being to hand hold in the field is so essential to a wildlife photographer. I want to say I can probably hand hold most of my lenses as well, but certain angles do become really difficult, especially when it comes to low angles, things like that. Yeah, the full frame gear, uh, there have been some pretty significant advances, making them a little bit lighter, or in some cases significantly lighter, but also balancing the lens a little bit better with the camera body. So yeah, full frame lenses can be handheld, I think for short periods of time, uh, but hand holding all day, like many wildlife photographers do, uh, the Micro Four Thirds system is, is truly much more compact. And how great is it to have that extra focal range? A wildlife photographer needs some reach, is, is what we call it. And having that extra reach is critically important to stay away from our subject and make sure we don't affect their behavior and capture natural behavior and, and having more focal length is not always the, the best option, but most of the time it is. Just a moment, if these videos are really helpful for your learning process, especially in wildlife photography, please don't forget to press the bell button right below the video to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the like button if this video helped you out. The second biggest advantage to the Olympus gear is the price. Because of the smaller and more compact size, the Olympus gear also costs much less because of fewer materials. Just to give you an example, uh, a popular wildlife lens is a 600 millimeter f4 lens. In a full frame system, those lenses run somewhere around $13,000. The equivalent in a Olympus lens would be a 300 millimeter lens. That 300 millimeter lens with the 2x crop factor becomes a 600 millimeter and stays an f4. That lens is about $2,500 for that particular lens, a significant savings and allows a lot of you to get out there with real professional level equipment in a much more compact size at a much more compact price. That really comes at a surprise to me that it is such a big margin. I mean, that is less than a quarter of the price. So for about $2,000 you have a couple of options for flagship cameras with Olympus which again is about one-third the price. And you say that doesn't speak for the quality and the functionality of the camera because very often one thinks the better the price, the higher the price, the better the gear. Yeah, unfortunately that's the way I think a lot of us tend to think when it comes to uh, material things. The, the more yeah. you pay for them, the better you're going to get. And that's just not always the case. Uh, you know, I make my living with my, my photography profession and I couldn't be more pleased with the, the Olympus gear. So I've heard of some Olympus features that seem to be outstanding. Matter of fact, if I have guests on my boat and they utilize them, I almost have a revolution on my hand because people <laughs> say they're cheating um, <laughs> when it comes to getting the wildlife shots at hand. Yeah. So which features are those and how applicable are they? One of them is specific to uh, wildlife photography, and that's something called pro capture. And like Janine just said, it is like cheating. Uh, it makes capturing uh, events that are unpredictable much easier to get. And the way that pro capture works is that when you press your shutter button and engage the autofocus, it starts storing a preset number of images for a preset amount of time into your buffer memory and doesn't write it immediately to your memory card. That just kind of keeps a rolling loop as long as you press that shutter button down. And then as soon as you press that shutter button completely, the camera takes those images that are currently in the buffer and writes them to your memory card and then continues to shoot on whatever your subject may be doing. So essentially it makes sure to account for human delay and human error exactly. and then make sure whatever delay you've had in your own reaction it makes up for that. 
this is a perfect feature to be using for something like a bird taking off. Uh, whether it's ducks from the water or a bird from a perch, something that can oftentimes be very hard to predict. And even the best people in the world at photographing birds taking flight miss, because by the time you see the bird move, it's too late to depress that shutter button. And so this is a way to essentially pre-record the images and then capture what happens afterwards. It's a truly, truly amazing feature. And there, there are a couple of other features that I, you know, I mentioned before, and we're not going to explain them here because we're really talking about wildlife photography, like live composite and live ND that are just outstanding for the nature photographer out there. And as wildlife photographers, we are out photographing nature a lot. So it's, it, it is applicable. So far, so good. This all sounded really, really promising and to me really quite surprising in some instances. But we also want to discover the disadvantages of micro fur third system. So our first disadvantage. In wildlife photography, we all agree that we require rather fast shutter speeds for animals chasing each other, birds flying, water splashing. Catching the movement is our priority number one. And at the same time, we often operate in very low light. For instance, in Africa, we go out very early to capture the action. If you go to the Amazon rainforest, you have the dark canopy. If you shoot bears in North America, it's often very overcast. So we don't have a lot of light available to achieve these fast shutter speeds. On a smaller sensor of a micro four thirds system, all our pixels get a little bit squished together and have to become smaller so that they can fit. That causes a different treatment of the light. So I want to ask you, Mark, is it possible to reach these shutter speeds? What does the ISO do on a micro four thirds sensor? And is it really a problem? Yes, having smaller pixels is going to essentially increase the noise in your images, especially at higher ISOs. And so that's something you just have to be willing to accept when you decide you might want to shoot with a micro four thirds system. In my case, uh, it's something that I'm willing to accept. Noise doesn't bother me all that much. Yes, I would like to minimize it, but also the real truth is that the technology inside the camera has gotten better and the noise levels are coming down and being much more uh, acceptable to the point where even shooting at ISO 6400 or higher uh, is, is just not objectionable to me. Additionally, in the last couple of years, software that reduces noise in your processing, in your post-production work, has become really, really good. So blended in, you can see two images shot with Mark's OM-1 as well as my Canon R3. And both are shot on 6400 ISO, a typical threshold for many wildlife photographers. And you can see a difference between the two images. Whether or not that bothers you is a personal subjective choice at the end. As Mark said, there is lots of work around. Some people really, really like to go into detail and are quickly bothered by noise. They, they struggle shooting higher than 1600 ISO. In my personal opinion, getting the action onto your sensor is always more important than worrying about the noise because at the end we're storytellers and we want to share our stories out there and there is fantastic content to be photographed. As a second disadvantage, I'm really curious to know if Mark is missing anything from Canon, especially after Canon has done this massive leap into the mirrorless market themselves. Yeah, certainly Canon has definitely, in the last few years, uh, jumped in with some rapid developments and make some, some you know, outstanding <laughs> mirrorless equipment. And so with, with that in mind, you know, one thing I do miss is less noise. We would all like to have less noise in our images, but the other thing that I might miss is kind of just the ergonomics of a bigger camera. I know you prefer a bigger camera. You were yes. holding mine the other day yeah. and it just, it just didn't feel great in your hands. But what initially made me 
go to Canon when I decided to go digital in 2003 was the way it felt in my hand and how it feels is critically important to yeah. to right. how you perform with your tool and so the you know the Olympus camera bodies are significantly smaller yeah. uh, and most people are led to believe that mirrorless camera systems are smaller by nature but that only really becomes true with micro four thirds so the Micro Four Third system also has a bit of a reputation of an enthusiast camera, something that's easy to take on holiday. Is that something that bothers you? Well, it, it doesn't bother me personally, but I, I like to think I have my ego in check a little bit. So as a wildlife photographer at a, at a professional level, it's important to me to have gear that is high quality and lives up to professional standards and the olympus gear sometimes as janine said does have a reputation of being an enthusiast system and uh but i think as you'll see with some of the images that i've i've gotten here on the on the choby river in the few days that i've been yeah. here uh, you'll see the image quality is is professional and the gear is is highly professional it is as rugged and weather sealed uh, as you'll you'll find out there and it performs extremely well and it's just you know and some people refer to it maybe as cute because it is a little <laughs> bit smaller but it is it is it is high quality professional level gear so at disadvantage number three for micro four third systems i know that you generally have a much larger depth of field the reason for that is if mark shoots effectively a 400 millimeter lens at f4.5 he gets 800 millimeters out of it but it will look like the depth of field of a 400 millimeter lens so some people say an f4 essentially looks like an f8 whether that is good or bad is very dependent on the specific wildlife situation that you are busy photographing. But as a general rule of thumb, I personally really like soft backgrounds or having a great bouquet because it creates that beautiful subject separation that gives the animal the attention they need. I don't even mind if the nose is blurry and the ears become blurry and it is really the focus fully on the eyes. Some people really do hate that but I do enjoy having a very very shallow depth of field in my images. So my question to Mark is does that affect your image quality? Do you feel you can work with that? Um, what was your experience so far? So as photographers, we always make compromises when we're out shooting. And in the case of this increased depth of field that you get with a micro four third system, uh, it is definitely something that I'm concerned about. It is something that I think I can work with. Uh, and, you know, it, it just depends on the particular situation. Uh, having this increased depth of field is, is also very much dependent upon the distance that I am from my subject and the background is uh, away from behind the subject. And so all of those things play into effect. Uh, it is very much true that if my background is very close to behind my subject, then I do have a much harder time throwing that background out of focus. And that does, that is bothersome at times, uh, but it's, again, uh, it's a compromise and it's something that I'm willing to uh, accept because of the additional benefits that we've, we've talked about previously. In turn, you have a much easier time going low because your gear is so much lighter and a lower angle always gives you a better background. Okay, that was some outstanding points, both on the advantage side and the disadvantage side for Micro Four Thirds cameras. For me personally though, I never really had an issue traveling with my camera gear. Yes, I admit it can be cumbersome at times, but my priority is to get the best low light performing camera out there. Not because I'm so finicky with noise, but I would actually like to be able to push my ISO to 20, 25,000 ISO if I have to. On top of that, I believe with a full frame sensor, you can also increase your depth of field for 
you know, some storytelling, but you have the chance to bring your depth of field down to create a nice bouquet. At the same time, I hope that maybe other brands will pick up some of Olympus's cool features in the future. We never know. However, Mark really had some outstanding points there. In talking about Micro Four Thirds cameras, I would now like to know which camera is best for wildlife photography in particular. Let's not compromise. Which one is the best of the best? So the flagship camera when it comes to wildlife photography for the Olympus system has been for quite a while the EM1X. It's a fabulous camera system, has a built-in battery grip, offers great features, many of which we've discussed. And then in addition, this past spring, the new OM system, formerly Olympus, introduced their first camera, the OM1. It is also a professional level camera body that offers even more features. It has added mammal tracking, what they call cat and dog, but it's really mammal tracking that works extremely well. Uh, the EM1X also had bird tracking, but it's been improved in the, uh, in the OM1 to the point where uh, it is actually very, very usable at this point. Previously, it worked well in certain situations, but I find myself now using it in almost nearly every situation that I'm photographing birds. Uh, both cameras are, are fantastic, uh, but now I am shooting with the, the OM-1. I have a couple of those camera bodies, and it comes in at a, a very reasonable price that I think we already mentioned. It's about $2,100 or $2,200, about one-third the cost of a, a flagship camera from other companies. Well, that sounds like a beast. It is still, despite the low price point for such a high-end camera body, um, quite a bit of money. So is there a lower priced wildlife body that is still usable for somebody who maybe only shoots once a year. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a good point. There are a couple of camera bodies that come in at a lower price point, and that's really going to be the EM-1. I think right now it's the EM-1 Mark III, uh, and there's also the, oh, the EM-5 Mark III. Both of those are in the mid to low $1,000 range. Uh, offer great functionality, uh, but maybe not at quite the high end of the other cameras. The EM-1 Mark III is probably your best bet if you're a wildlife photographer. It has a higher frame rate and, and things like that, uh, a little bit better autofocus that, we're, uh, that is so critical to us as wildlife photographers. And do you believe Olympus really has enough wildlife lenses on offer to be a viable compact wildlife photographer system? I do, and this may sound uh, a little bit over the top, but well, my opinion is that Olympus probably has the best wildlife lens on the market right now. They offer a uh, 150 millimeter to 400 millimeter zoom lens that's the equivalent in a full frame of 300 millimeters to 800 millimeters at a fixed uh, f-stop at f4.5, which is pretty amazing. And it's a very compact lens as well. In addition, it has a built-in teleconverter that allows you to essentially get a 400 millimeter to a thousand millimeters in a full frame equivalent at f5.6. It's incredibly sharp, has great image stabilization, but overall it is, I think, one of the best lenses for a wildlife photographer on the planet. Hmm. I know, a little That's over a the top. <laughs> but yeah, it is, but... Awesome! That was really informative. Thank you so much, Mark, for your time and input about Micro Four Third Systems. Thank you, Janine. It's always a pleasure to be here on the Chobe River using my gear. And you know, no matter what gear we decide to use, we both end up with great results and it's about compromise and priorities and, and just getting out there and, and having fun and enjoying the, the world around us. That is so true. And sharing those images with you guys at the end. If you guys consider switching to a Micro Four Third system, I really hope this video helped you make up your mind. At the end, it remains a personal choice that really depends on how much you shoot, 
what animals you shoot, how much you travel, how much you're allowed to carry, what focal ranges you need on average when you're shooting, how strong you are, what, what your priorities are really. If you would like to shoot wildlife in the Chovy, just like Mark did now, please check out our packages below and maybe we can welcome you here soon. Bye bye!